Pittsburgh investors. What's up? Let's talk about real estate. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise. Smash the subscribe button, like button, follow button. I don't care. YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, whatever, man. If you're trying to learn about real estate, this is where you want to be. Let's do it. Now, today I'm talking to Amalia, investor from Pittsburgh. Now, I just sent you a video and I got some feedback from you, okay? And uh, <clears throat> the feedback was the property you that I had sent you, you liked the numbers. The numbers were great, uh, but you thought that perhaps the neighborhood was a little risky, okay? And you wanted to look at some B-grade assets. Uh, we can do that. However, we're not going to do that in today's video. Today's video, I just wanted to clarify a couple things and shoot you this property that I think is a hell of an opportunity. You have like another like four videos or so uh, in your account bank. So we have more than enough time to take a look at some B-grade assets. But before we get into that, I want you to know that like uh, the numbers and the price points you're going to see on these B-grade assets are, are not going to be anywhere near as attractive as what you're seeing in the DNC grade assets. Now, this particular property uh, is in an area that I consider to be D today, but because of the Metro Health uh, investment, you could Google this, it's available online. They're putting a billion bucks into the surrounding neighborhood. I think this area has got a really good chance for long-term appreciation, right? I'm, I'm not much of like a spec investor, right? If you're If you're trying to invest for appreciation, I mean like, you know, California is obviously the place, places like that, right? Cleveland is more uh, just like Pittsburgh, really. It's just, uh, it's it's a cash flow uh, market, right? Pittsburgh and Cleveland are very similar markets, right? That's probably why you're comfortable coming to Cleveland working with us because it's very similar to what you're getting. Uh, so with all that, right, I, I understand the importance of cash flow, but if you can have your cake and eat it too, I think that's really nice. So before we make the dive into these B-grade assets, which, you know, you're going to be looking at like, Rent rolls that are still going to be in the $1,500 range, but now you're going to need to spend like $150,000 plus uh, on the duplex, right, as opposed to the price points uh, you're seeing now. So I just wanted to make sure I clarify that and, and show you one more property that's similar, uh, has similar numbers to, to the numbers that I think you came to this market for. So uh, let's go to a quick commercial break, and then I'll get right into it. <laughs> Forty-two eleven Store Ave, Cleveland, four four one zero nine. Been on the market four days, and we need to move. We need to move quick, right? The Cleveland market, yeah, as, as you're probably aware, it's insane, dude. There's just so many people uh, bidding on these properties because the price to rent ratios are nuts, right? The price to rent ratios in Cleveland are so much more attractive than the majority of the country. This particular property, in my opinion. Uh, listed at a price point that's going to uh, begat a major bidding war, okay? $99,000. Now, we only have two photos because it's fully occupied, all right? That's okay, though, right? We got the front house here, right? We have a front house and we have a back house, okay? Between these two homes, right, we have three total units right and the market rent for each of these units is going to be 750 750 and 900 right uh the two 750 dollars ones those are duplex units two ones and then we have a separate two family house right so 900 right so it's even uh more attractive than a traditional triplex right because one is a full freaking house okay so you're looking at a market rent every month of 2400 or 28800 now as far as the price goes they've listed at 99000 which just based upon that rent roll would seem super low the reason they're pricing it that low is they do not have the rents up to market, right? So you're going to slowly need to increase those. Currently, they got people in there at 450, 420, and 485, right? But that is one of the great things about real estate investing, man. If you guys know how to do this the right way, you can look 
at other people, maybe mom and pop landlords like this one who are running these properties, not as efficiently as they could. And that's how we create value. That's how we get these crazy deals, right? Because I tell you what, if this was a professional investor, a professional turnkey turkey company professional reseller and they're bringing in $2,400 a month in rent currently which is where this should be for the long haul that's what Holton Wise will be able to target for you when we take over the management you ain't selling it for 99k dude that doesn't make any sense because the numbers would be insane right $2,400 a month comes in $28,800 a year after fixed and variable expense estimates right I anticipate this property costing an investor $13,096 a year on average to operate, leaving you with a $15,704 a year NOI. You pick it up at the price of $99,000, your mortgage down payment's only $24,750, right? How insane is that, right? $24,750 is all you need to bring to the table. Bank kicks in another $75K. That would be a 46.3% cash on cash return or a cap of 16. That is, of course, if we can get the tenants, all three of which, from where they currently are, up to market rent. Now, this is the show where I cut it to you straight. This is the show where I talk to you about transparency in the real estate business. Is it possible that we could take our three legacy tenants, our three inherited tenants, paying below market rent, again, 450, 420, 485. Can we possibly get them up to 750, 750, 900 without a turnover? Yes, it's possible. And I just gave you the numbers on what it would look like if we do that theoretically. However, in real world, is that practical? Probably not. I would say the odds are unlikely that you're going to get these three folks from where they currently are to market rent without at least doing one turnover, right? That's why when we run these numbers, we factor in vacancy, non-payment. We factor in repairs and maintenance, right? Because when you're a rental property investor, the majority of um, your repairs, right? They typically come at the turnover, right? People see like a repair estimate, like on this particular property, repairs and maintenance, we're estimating $120 a month. People see that and they get it like in their head, like, oh, I'm going to spend $120 every single month on repairs. No, it's not how it works, right? You're probably going to have like a tenant in there in that particular unit and you're going to go through like 10, 12, 14, 18 months of spending nothing. And then boom, when the tenant turns over, then you're dropping a few grand, things of that nature, right? That's how that works out, right? So, do I think that you can get those rents all the way up there without some type of turnover? Probably not, right? Maybe one, maybe two of the tenants, maybe we get them up. Uh, but I can't, you know, tell you with a certainty uh, how many of those tenants, uh, when and where that turnover is going to happen. So, right, as you're analyzing this property, think about making the investment. You have to understand that that is a risk, right? Turnover is part of the real estate investment business, right? Nobody gets rental properties and places tenants in there and gets 30, 40 year tenants all the time. That's just not practical, right? So, uh, what you have going for you is right now, they can't get comparable units like this for anywhere near those prices. So what I like to do to lower the probability that they're going to turn because you increase the rent is I don't like to go in and be like, yo, market rent's 900, you're paying 485. Next lease, boom, you got to pay 900. I think that is going to give you a high chance that they're just going to be like, oh, dude, I can't afford it, and they will move out, right? And then you're almost guaranteed to spend that money on a turn. What I like to do, I like to raise the rents nice and slow. 50 this year, 50 next year, right? It'll still cash flow. The price is so freaking cheap, it'll still cash flow at the current rent. So I like to go nice and slow and keep those butts in the units, right? Because we make our money in this business by turning our units over as few times as possible. If you own a apartment building, you own, let's say you own one unit, right, for 20 years, the guy who makes the most money is the guy who turns it over the least amount of times over those 20 years. So, 99000 is what they're asking. I think we got to offer 99000 at the minimum. You let me know what you want to offer. I do not anticipate anything other than a massive bidding war. If it were me, I'd probably be willing to kick 10 k above list price, but you let me know, and I'll write it up.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.